right, we're here at the marina. Riley's leaving his car here so that when we get back, we actually have a way to get home. We got pretty much everything we need for this ride. We got a hammer and we got another hammer, but this one's pretty cool because it's both kinds of hammer, both flavors of hammer. It's just interchangeable. That's really all I can think of that we need when we have a bucket because you can never have too many five gallon buckets, but wish us luck, we're off to Cape May. So we got about the cheapest Airbnb we could find in, well, what we thought was Cape May, but we're actually in a place I think called Wildwood, which is about 15 minutes away. Uh, it's one change operated toll booth away from Cape May. You actually have to throw change into this hopper and then it counts the change and lets you through the toll. Uh, but this place, it's it's really something. I mean, it is it is the landlord special everywhere. Coats and coats of paint. I mean, hey, it's a roof over our head and it was under $200, just barely a night, uh, which is pretty crazy considering it's like the off season, but. I'm not sure what these are. Look at this. It's my new pickup truck on Lindsay's finger right there. Uh-huh. It's a pretty nice place though. We got, here's Riley. Doesn't come with Wi-Fi. Actually, Lindsay, what did, uh, what did it say? Uh, they provide Wi-Fi April 15th through October 15th only. <laughs> so we not did now. not, we did not fall into here. Let's see, no smoking. You are loved more than you will ever know by someone who died to know you, Jesus. Get your ration of coins, which I know I have somewhere. I See, it? Lindsay was giving me a hard time because I wanted to pick up this nickel in the 7-Eleven parking lot yesterday. She said, don't pick up that nickel. Does anyone know where my coins are? Rationed out exactly 25 cents, not 25, 75 cents. So we're going to see if I counted correctly. That little sign is going to say paid. Thank you if I counted correctly. Yesterday we had to sit there and add pennies for my one until it... Two hours later. And now there's people. <laughs> no, you were too short. Was too short. Two pennies short. Oh. This is where Lindsay leaves us. She's going home. I'm terrified. We'll be fine. Think. There's three of us, and we between the three of us, we probably have half a clue as to what we're doing. We'll see. Oh, yeah. All right. See you later. Bye. All right, Mexico. Here we come. It is pretty cold this morning. A lot colder than it's been the past few days, but you know, if I didn't pick some of the worst weather to try to do this trip in, wouldn't be me. But we're down here at the boat. We got her loaded up. We even got her fired up. We even got the heat kicking in this thing. I know, it's far too nice for me. It really is. But uh, yeah, we're about to leave here, Cape May. Head up the Delaware, through the C&D, and then down to Pasadena. We're gonna try to do this in one cannonball run here. But uh, big shout out to John for letting me tie up at his place here. And ooh, it's windy. It's like 30 degrees this morning without wind chill. So it was a nice 65 a couple days ago, but not anymore. So we're doing a uh, pre-trip safety check here. We got Riley. We got Chris Fix. What's up? We're good to go. Okay. I think I remember how to. The good thing about work boats is that you kind of just run them into whatever, you know what I mean? They're built for all that. Here's bringing a modern technology to a more than vintage work boat. Here he's got a drone, and that is the coolest thing. That out. That's us right there. You can actually see the time. plume of, uh, of water coming from the canal right here, and then our dirty water where we just left. Wow, that's crazy. It's like cheating, man. If we get lost, we just fly that thing up and figure <laughs> out where we're going. 
our first obstacle here is to get through the first canal and then up the Delaware Bay. It's blowing a little bit. I think it's like a northwest wind, so we should be headed into it. We might try to get over towards the western side of the Delaware Bay. They have a little bit of protection there with the shore. We'll see how bad it is when we get there. We've already been here for ten, five minutes, ten minutes, and I already got Riley driving. Chris is shooting film. I'm just hanging out. I'm doing captain stuff. We're making decent time. We got through the uh, first bit of the uh, Delaware Bay, and it was a little rocky. I'm not gonna lie. I was I was a little nervous. Not too nervous. Uh, but smooth sailing so far. Knock on wood. What do you think, buddy? Yeah, I mean that was a lot of fun. Waves coming over the bow. We put the boat to the test. You're never gonna see this in the Chesapeake, right? Yeah, I, so I really hope not. If we, we just, see that kind of stuff in the Chesapeake, we got bigger problems. We just showed the boat its worst situation and it did fine. Yeah. And Chris hasn't even had to use any common hand tools to fix any kind of problems. Nothing, so nothing. It's been pretty good so far. Hold it together. That's right. Hey man, how you holding up? This is a lot of fun, but uh, it's a little chilly in here, you know? I could, uh, I could use a little bit more heat, I think. Huh. I think I got you. So I've mentioned before that this boat has the luxury of heat, uh, meaning it has a bus heater, which is a, basically another radiator with a fan that uses the coolant from the engine to blow hot air. Well, these two tubes run up into the cabin where we're sitting. we got to turn the heat up. So I'm going to turn up the heat using common hand tools and garbage. And that's how you turn up the heat in your crab boat. A lot warmer, huh? That is. So we've done about 44 miles so far. An average about 10 knots, but like just kind of like the rest of my life, we're going into the tide. We're fighting the tide here. So uh, we burned about a quarter tank of fuel in 44 miles. In theory, we should have more than enough to get home, but uh, we'll check in back on this when we get into the c &D Canal in case we need to get fuel. So we are at a little bit of a crossroads here where we could cut on the inside of these islands to a different channel and probably make more time by not fighting as much current, but we're running a bit of a risk because we don't want to run aground trying to make the cut through. I think we've decided that we're going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. So this is our main course roughly. But if we cut through here and run in here, we're not going to have near as much current to fight. And we could probably pick up a couple miles an hour and shave some time off our trip. The old dial-up sounder claims we got 28 foot currently. I'll tell you the current in this Delaware Bay as we get closer to C and D is strong, real strong. Chris has done it before, but uh, I've never done it. Riley's been in, into the C and D to Chesapeake City, but I've never been in the Delaware Bay or the C and D. So this is a whole new ordeal for me. Come on, dial up depth finder. Don't fail me now. 17, we're steady losing water, but we're approaching the channel. 16. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 9, 9. If we can make it through here, it's going to shave a lot of time off of our journey. It's just kind of a risk. I'm trying to pass. We made it through that channel right there. It got skinny there for a minute. I was a little nervous, but we're back to 20 foot of water. I think our little gamble is going to pay off. We were doing about eight and a half, nine knots at about 1700 RPMs up here and we were steady losing speed so we made the cut into the channel here and i'm thinking it's going to pay off what do you think chris i think it will that's the whole goal we'll find out it doesn't look like there's much current so yeah. that's the biggest thing and uh pretty much like everything else in my life i'm fighting all of nature and uh trying to spend twice as much time work twice as hard to uh get half the distance so. you're always going against the current that's right always against that's right <laughs> 
so far the Delaware Bay is a lot different than the Chesapeake Bay. The, the shoreline here. Yeah, the, the shoreline is like empty for the most part. And if there's anything, it's like industrial stuff, bridges and warehouses and power plants. If this was the Chesapeake Bay, there'd be condos and apartments and vacation homes and buildings, like houses every single square inch. We've officially made it into the CND. We're about halfway, maybe even a little bit further than halfway. So far, knock on wood. So far, so good. We still have all three trusty crew members. Riley as the relief captain. Me for looking good and owning the boat. And Chris Fitz. Just to have him along, why not, you know? I can't believe it. It's actually happening. We're like it feels like an accomplishment. I tell you, all that time in the Delaware Bay is, that's long hours there. It is really weird, I will say, to be like this close to shore, and it's 35 foot of water right now. I mean, it is a canal, and big ships do pass through the sea, and do like, I think just big tankers, really any seafaring vessels, like, you know, big cargo ships and stuff do come through the sea, and d It just seems so wrong. Like, we used to the Chesapeake where, it's so shallow everywhere. You can be 800 yards offshore and, and get out of the boat and walk around. And it's a lot different here. I mean, of course, it's a man-made canal, but it still seems so wrong. We have somehow, some way, figured out a way to fight the tide. Literally, from the time we've left the dock, we've hit every ebb tide <laughs> thus far. <laughs> I mean, fighting it, too. And it is an abnormally low tide. So it's like running twice as hard as it usually does. I don't know how we managed that. We tried to plan the complete opposite, but the timing just wasn't working out. So we, uh, we've been creeping along here. Although we're almost out of the C&D, so we are kind of in the home stretch. <laughs> through the Elk River out of the C&D and I tell you what that is a beautiful sunset and I got a bunch of crap on my face but that that never gets old that really is it's about six o'clock on the Elk River just getting into the Chesapeake been pretty smooth sailing Delaware was rough C&D was a little boring We're getting into my home turf here we'll take a look at the trip odometer we've done 81 miles so far we even hit a maximum speed of 13 blistering miles an hour. Now coming into the Chesapeake Bay, I think once I'm in my home turf, the trip's gonna start to move a lot faster. We've done about 81 miles. We're pretty close. We're gonna, it's gonna get dark here. It's gonna put in a few hours, heads down and grind. So we'll see you Pasadena. We made it. Quiet. Made it all the way back and we still have almost a half a tank of fuel. So it's like 260 gallons for both tanks. So we went like 120 miles, you said. So what do we burn? 11 gallons an hour? Something like that. About yeah. a mile a gallon. About a mile a gallon, which is not bad considering this motor's from 1982 and has 18,000 hours on it. 18,000. 18 thousand hours on it she she didn't do us dirty i can say it now we're back to the dock like. well we finally made it back to pasadena from cape may this boat's been from barnegat light to cape may through the canal up the delaware through the c and d down the chesapeake all the way back to pasadena from cape may to here we did it in 11 hours and 49 minutes and covered 118 miles <laughs> in one day yeah, long day, long day. 
I think we uh, are well deserving of a good night's sleep tonight. I'm pretty sure. What do you guys think? Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. <laughs> you guys have like one collective brain cell left. Yeah. I can yeah. tell. Yeah. Bamboozled poor Chris Fix into doing this journey with me. This is like enjoyable to me, okay? So, <laughs> so bad. See, you, you, so you want to be a YouTuber, huh? This is fun. This is fun when you're a YouTuber. Uh, not in my computer editing or under a car like with a camera like, why can't you fit? You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> to hang out on a boat. It was actually awesome and I had a great time and I can't thank both of you guys enough. Sure. Riley's been my friend forever. Chris has been my friend for probably the past year or so and uh, we've been planning this trip for a little while. It, uh, Took a little while for it to all come together, but finally did and made it. We got it done. We fought the tide the entire way, but we made it. <laughs> yep. It's kind of a metaphor for our lives, but it's all good. We're here now. I am beyond relieved. <laughs> that boat ran great. Boat ran yeah. great. You ain't no crabber. Ain't no crabber. If you don't do it the hardest way possible, you ain't no crabber. <laughs>